Why do we love or hate durians? And what is the history of durians? It goes without saying that durians is a very divisive fruit. You know, you either hate it or you love it. We're, we're not just talking about Penangites or Malaysians. Even those outside of Malaysia have a 50-50 chance of loving it. You can see this practically in every single reaction video. But what makes us love it or hate it? Well, a lot of it has to do with smell, which affects a lot of our taste. And the German Research Center for Food Chemistry found that there are 50 discrete compounds that make up the signature smell and flavor of durians, four of which are completely unknown to science. It's not one compound, but a mesh of different kinds of compound together, and each one has its own unique aroma, which is why you either love it or hate it, since different people react differently to different smells. And you can let me know in the comment box what you think. It's nice to hear your perspective on durians. Now, my personal take is I'm a definite durian lover. I mean, I've loved durians ever since I came to Malaysia. You know, I mean, my family were durian lovers, my grandparents, uh, my grandfather literally had an orchid. So that was my first experience with durians and I love the whole custardy, delicious aroma, smells and everything that goes with it. So obviously I'm one of those people that react favorably to those 50 discrete compounds. Uh, all this while, I can definitely say I was an eater, but I was not obsessed with it. It was only after I got involved in Penang Hidden Gems and Tiger and Amelia, uh, got really excited about the turn of the season for durians and shared with me what makes durian, or especially Penang durian so special. And we also did a live stream in regards to the history of durian and the different ones from Malaysia and Thailand. So you can check out the Penang Hidden Gems page to see uh, more of that. But also at the same time, throughout the whole experience, I learned new vocabularies uh, like old trees, clone durians, uh, durian kampungs, grafting, the different kinds of flavors from sweet to alcohol, bitter, flowery, and numb, or uh, how it has layers of taste depending on the notes it hits from the beginning, middle, and to the end. What sealed the deal for me was to learn that eating durians in Penang is different from eating durians in the rest of the world. According to Lindsay Gasek from Year of Durian, which we featured uh, as our guest in the live stream I was talking about Tiger Tan and the Mohawk Show, it is the soil and weather, uh, the way the farmers take care of these trees and the style and techniques the, the uh, sellers use to select and present durians to their customers. It encompasses this whole experience from farm to table and of course to mouth that makes it very special. It's the special connection with nature, the simpleness of village life that makes eating durians in Balik Pulau so profound. Even it means just simply getting your durian fix on a roadside stall in Bali Pula. Uh, not to be a snob, but it's not the same as eating durians in a busy city, you know, where the durian is far from its source. All these durians uh, talking just makes me want to test out my newfound knowledge and appreciation to the next level. But it is the MCO and we're all staying at home. I'm sure you are, you know, but maybe not those watching this in the future. The next best thing is to get some durians and enjoy the Balipula durians at home. So right now we're on our way to pick up some durians uh, courtesy of Omptons and uh, we're gonna be on this journey. We're right now in the car, just going through. Pretty excited, let's see what's up. Thankfully, Hamptons Hotel satiated my cravings for the Balik Pulau durians and it has a lot to do with the sponsor of this video, Hamptons, who recently started a drop-off service for their food, uh, mainly which includes durians uh, and the details are in the description if you want to find out more. The durians come from three orchards in Balik Pulau. You place your order the day before and you pick it up the day after. The durians are fresh, it's dropped off in the morning, open and packed in a Tupperware box uh, and you can pick it up from the Hamptons. Uh, different varieties are available. The moment we receive the package, the car literally smelled of durians. But enough about my personal experience with durians. Uh, but where did it come from? What is the history of durian?
Well, I did some research and durians originated from Borneo and Sumatra and in today's drawn borders due to history, it could be said that the origins could be shared by Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore and Thailand. But the name itself, durian, actually originated from the Malay language and was first recorded in 1508. It was derived from the Malay word thorn or duri. That and wild trees were mostly found in the Malay Peninsula and from there orchids sprung up from regions as far as India and New Guinea. Now the earliest western reference to durians were in the 15th century by uh, Niccolo di Conti where he wrote that they the people of Sumatra have a green fruit which they call durian as big as watermelons. Inside there are five things like elongated oranges and resembling thick butter with a combination of flavors which is a pretty accurate description of what a durian practically is. And in 1929, J.D. Gimlet wrote in his Malay Poisons and Charm Cures that the durian fruit must not be eaten with brandy, which led some to believe, which is now practically a folklore, of never eating durians with alcohol or coffee. Now there's probably some truth in this because in 2009, the University of Tsukuba found that durians contain aldehyde dehydrogenase or ALDH, the same enzyme our body uses to break down alcohol. So when you consume alcohol or caffeine, it also means that your body has uh, decreased its ability to clear out toxins, which gives truth to the folklore. And also when we're talking about folklore, there was also a uh, old Javanese saying that says that, you know, Bila durian jato sarong nai. And this may have inhibited its spread to the West for its supposed lecherous properties were written about by Herman Wetterling, detailing in his book, The Erotic Properties of Durian in the 20th Century. Oh yeah, and there's no scientific proof or studies done yet to prove whether this is true or false. So we could just assume that it's just a tale. But what is true is that durians literally had an identity crisis in the early days with some nations confusing sour soap with durians which led to the uh, sour soap being called durian Belanda. That's practically meaning the Dutch durian. And as you can see, the durian fruit is a very divisive fruit on many levels, you know, be it its taste, its smell, uh, its culture, its folklore, which tends to be positive, negative, but also at the same time, you know, when it comes to Penang, there's also a sense of pride that goes into the durian eating culture because we have our own unique properties, our own unique uh, species and varieties of durian that has its own unique stories as well, telling our version, our tale of the durian culture. And also at the same time, if you enjoyed this video, please like our page. My name is The Mohawk and I'll see you next time.